Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey, here with all the latest updates, the news, the rumors, and some of the truth as well around the Lael Collins suspension. Now, perhaps you guys saw the CBS Sports article that sh shed some light on the Lael Collins situation. We'll break down why a lot of that is true, although maybe just a little bit deceptive. I'll explain. Stay tuned. First, the background in case you guys missed it. Maybe you were out of the country or something weird. Collins has been suspended Five games by the NFL, the reason, allegedly, is due to missing drug tests. Collins has already appealed that and lost initially. He is appealing it again under the, the argument that the NFL CBA does not allow for suspensions due to missed tests, which is potentially at least partially true. Again, I'll explain that in a minute. It is a long shot, however, for Collins to win, which I hope he does find a way. Collins' argument is that the NFL CBA only allows for fines, not suspensions for missed tests. Now, there is grounds for suspensions for failure to cooperate. I do think there is some at least maybe gray wording there. I would argue that repeatedly skipping tests could be failure to cooperate because you're not cooperating with the tests. But that is that gray, murky background, hence the appeals still going on. Collins also claims that some of those tests that he missed came during the Cowboys... Cowboys COVID issues. Now, it was not all of them, as I've seen some even media people out there push against Lael Collins, but at least some of them were. Not all seven plus necessarily, but that is a potential reasoning and mitigating circumstance. I would suspect, however, that the NFL would have found a way to agree to reschedule those tests because, again, the COVID issues are a big deal for the NFL. There's also some confusion as to how five games was picked because that exact number isn't really in the CB. I think I have some theories as to why on that. There's also this screenshot quote report floating around from Jason Lock and Four, which I think is very important to mention. Quote, Collins has been tested roughly 10 times a month over the past 18 months. And according to sources, which for the record is Leo Collins' agent, just so we're clear on that, has not tested positive for marijuana once between October 21st, 2020 and August 11th, 2021. So that's not the entire 18th month time frame. That's a shorter time frame than the 18 months. It's okay. However, Collins has been cited seven times for failure to appear for testing, although often with mitigating circumstances, according to sources. Now, that note and that quote is important as it relates to Lael Collins and the Dallas Cowboys. There's also some stuff that, in reality, got left out of the quote that wasn't mentioned that I think is very important some added context that explains why that's a pretty massive number actually not with the NFL CBA now before we get too far in I know this is the popular theory trend out there on social media so safe space to answer however you want does the NFL hate the Cowboys this is the pinned comment on today's video. You can get your votes in. You can be how, truthful however way you see the truth being there. Get your votes in. Type in Y for yes or type in N for no again. This is the pinned comment. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and get your votes in. Now that 10 times a month testing stuff, right? That seems like a lot. It's actually not. And I think it's a sh it's bad job by CBS to not include this. That level of testing means that Lael Collins is already in stage two of the NFL substance abuse program. That means this is not the first time Collins has run into issues. He is well, he's through stage one, he's in the second and most severe potentially penalized stage. What I'm saying is this is not an unusual amount of testing for someone in this stage of the program. It should have been mentioned in that article. This means this is not Lael Collins' first run-ins with the NFL and the drug testing program. This is all approved within the CBA. So I get that correctly. There's really weird why Deshaun Watson is not suspended, and he definitely should be, or at least on the commissioner's exempt list. But I think Houston, the NFL, has got the hushes agreement. Yeah, 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 it's fine. Pay, we'll just make him inactive, and it's all good. We'll ignore the very severe Deshaun Watson issues. We know what the BS was with the Zeke Elliott situation but as for the level of testing itself that specific issue there's nothing wrong with that that level 
is the normal level for someone who is already in stage two of the program. This is not Lael Collins' first issue. Now, as how do we get to the five games, which is a weird number, and is not right, I don't think. Bobby Belt, front of the show, did mention this, and I think he might be on to something here. I don't know what led up to Lael Collins being in the program, which he is, but ESPN reported in March of 2020 at the new CBA a second violation of stimulants or direct X results in a five-game suspension. Now, again, it wasn't for failed tests, but that number does match. Again, there is a disconnect here between the listed rules for Lael Collins and the discipline he received. Now, I think what the NFL is pushing, it could be the, the avoided tests for, for the, the stimulants and stuff, and the guy with the five games that way, could be the case. My suspicion, and again, it's suspicion right now, because we don't really have a firm answer one way or the other. Both sides, Collins and the NFL, are kind of in spin mode right now, as they so often are when it comes to suspensions. The five games could be due to the appeal. The, the, the level of game suspension for various violations of Failure to cooperate range less than five and more than five. Maybe the appeal process got Collins down to five since he did have one appeal. I'm not entirely sure. Again, this is speculation on my part, but I did want to mention that, trying to figure out just why these numbers look so weird for Lael Collins. There is a disconnect there. I don't know exactly what it is. Now, if you guys want to bet on the Cowboys, do their sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code that you guys see on screen, Cowboys125. That'll get you a 125% deposit bonus. And we'll keep this up for one more day for you guys. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code Cowboys125. Sign up and deposit at least 100 bucks. When you use that URL and promo code below me and right up there too, you'll get a 125% deposit bonus. Once you do that, email us, jersey at chatsports.com, and we'll get you guys hooked up with a Cowboys jersey. Two options available, both colors that you'll see, by the way. CD Lamb and also Ezekiel Elliott. Sorry, they did not have any Dak Prescott jerseys available. So it's Lamb or Zeke. Email us, jersey at chatsports.com. If you have questions, use the email there. You can also get ahead of the curve. Send us your BetUS account number and a screenshot of your first bet because you've got to place a bet to be eligible. So email us, jersey at chatsports.com. Now back to Lael Collins. He is still still appealing. And although I did come down very harshly on Lael Collins in the original video, which I still mostly stand by, go to your tests. It's, it's not that challenging. You shouldn't be missing that level of tests. I know some NFL players skip the tests because they're worried about getting dinged. I get that. Don't miss them. Just if you, if you want to do whatever, that's fine with me. Again, the NFL has really lessened the marijuana penalties, which again, I don't think is the core issue here. Take your tests. I hope deeply that this suspension gets overturned. I'm not going to get my hopes up here. I think it's a pretty deep long shot, but I, of course, will be cheering for Lael Collins and the Cowboys to win it because that helps my football team win. So what do you guys think? What is the percent chance that Lael Collins wins his appeal with the NFL? Get your votes slash assessments in the comments section. Again, I would love to see this overturned. I would love to for the NFL to say, oh, yeah, we messed up, or the, the Collins' team to find, yeah, this is wrong there. Having already gone through one appeal, I'm not getting my hopes up. Clearly, whatever the NFL presented was enough for the appeal process to go, no, the NFL is correct in their judgment. That makes me worry. And Lael Collins, make no mistake about it, is a huge loss for the Dallas Cowboys, a significant loss. It will impact the game plan. You're playing Joey Bosa next week for the LA Chargers. That's going to be an issue for the Cowboys in terms of finding success in that area. So folks, it is going to impact the game plan. There's no way around that. That is going to be a problem for the Dallas Cowboys. So hopefully Collins ends up being okay and he's able to return. But if he doesn't, that's going to be an issue for Dallas in week one. Get $5 off your first order, folks, of the best-tasting healthy cereal on the market. It's Magic Spoon. 
magicspoon.com slash cowboys. That link, by the way, that URL, clickable version in the comment section and in the description. That way you guys can get that $5 off. There's no better blend of health and deliciousness here from Magic Spoon. High in protein, 13 or 14 grams. Low in carbs, 4 grams of net carbs. And 0 grams of sugar as well. And tons of incredibly delicious flavors as well. I love the frosted, peanut butter, and fruity. And not really that order, but they're all incredible. If you love chocolate, they've got a delicious cocoa. They've got maple waffle. That stuff smells insanely good as well. So get $5 off your first order at magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Let's look now here on the Dallas Cowboys report at some potential Lael Collins replacements if he does end up missing the five games as he's currently suspended for. It is a big loss for Dallas, as I think everyone knows out there. I think the favorite right now, as we'll go more in depth in here in a minute, is Ty Inseki, the right tackle right now for the Cowboys, who has played right and left tackle over his rather long NFL career. But he's not the only option. In fact, the one that I think a lot of you guys are, are hoping would end up being the case is maybe Zach Martin, the team's right guard. Now, Martin did play some right tackle last season. However, I do want to emphasize this again. Martin doesn't really want to play right tackle. He's more comfortable at right guard, feels better there. And whether it's true or not, he did get hurt after making the transition to a different position. However, the argument, which I like quite a bit, doing so would get Connor McGovern on the field at right guard. If you want to play your best five without, without Leo Collins, I think McGovern is one of those five best players. So what do you guys think? Would you play Zach Martin at right tackle? Get your votes in for me. A for yes, you would, or B for eh, no, you would not. I understand the pros and cons here, so get your votes in for me right now in the comments section. Now, Ty Insecki is the next man up, I think, at right tackle. Older player, still pretty decent in the run game. He was bad, make no mistake about it, a bad performance in the first preseason game. The other two that he played in, though, was much, much better. I think he's the front runner, but I do want to acknowledge this. At least a couple of coaches on this Cowboys staff really like Terrence Steele. He had the surprise week one start last year, really struggled early on, got a little bit better as the year went on, but make no mistake, I would rather not see Terrence Steele out there at right tackle. A technical option is also Brandon Knight. I do like him better at guard because he has, I think, shown better stuff there. He's played some tackle. I don't love him in that area. Connor Williams, by the way, makes zero sense. Taking your left guard, who's only played on the left side in the NFL to the right side, bad idea, going to lead to major, major issues. So because of that, I'd say your likely options, either Ty Insecki, who I think is the favorite, or Terrence Still. Steele. We'll know more as week two moves along in the pre-game planning process. If you guys want more Cowboys videos, hit that big red button and subscribe today. YouTube.com slash Cowboys TV. Daily videos coming out every single day. Go subscribe, folks. It's free.